Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Game 3 of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe here in beautiful Capital City between the Wild Wombats and the Nutty Bananas. It's Game 3, folks, and you could not have asked for a better start to the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. Uh, what am I supposed to do again? As Pete Wheeler steps up to the bat for the first time, Bananas walked away with a 2-1 victory in Game 1 after a 10-inning thriller that saw many a controversial play and exciting call. Wombats got revenge yesterday in Game 2, winning also 2-1. Two to Got an RBI double from Ahmed Khan, an RBI single from Morgan in the bottom of the third. And... Kitty Kalaguchi, Junior Cy Young Award winner, had a no-hitter going through five innings, which we haven't seen since 82, since 86, I'm sorry, in, a, in the super entire, in the Ultra Grand Championship universe, I should say. So we come into game three, it's even score at one apiece in this best of five series, so whoever wins here will be forcing the elimination game on their opponent, as Sanchez connects on that grounder, doesn't make it the first in time, a 2-3 successful. I'm looking for a kind pitcher, pitcher. It was a tough start to the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe for the Wombats. Coming into the game, their star player, Pete the Steeler Wheeler, was nursing an ACL sprain, which looks like he's still suffering with out there. As Frazier's going to ground out to first, and that'll be out number three. Wombats also were unable to get anything going late in the game, on game one, after some controversial calls, coupled with uh, some unfortunate batting that ended up putting them home, losing game one. So I've been checking out those Wombat fan forums, and everybody's still ablaze after game one, but they were able to even it after game two, so... People have, people have loosened up out there. That's what baseball's about. Loosening up, having fun. That's why it's still America's pastime, even here in the ancient year of 2020. Out of the mound there, Kenny Kawaguchi, Jr. Cy Young Award winner. Your regular season leader in strikeouts and second best in earned run, an average of earned runs as he strikes out Jay Green to get strikeout number one on the day. Game one, in that 10-inning stretch, we had Kawaguchi go for quite the long stint, but facing the, this batting core for the first time, that's easily the best the Wombats have faced all season, he ended up getting pulled by Coach Benny in the bottom of the sixth, top of the sixth inning, Placed by, for only the second time this season by Pablo Sanchez, as Dunkel will take off for first, but not in time. Good tag there by Wheeler. And then we'll see that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sanchez pitched in relief all the way through the rest of game two. Ended up giving away the home run. No, the uh, in the park home run at the top of the 10th inning for Julie Dunkel. Sorry about those technical difficulties, folks. We're uh, having some trouble calibrating our equipment out here. You'd think we'd have it down by game three of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe, but hey, you're not perfect either. So here we are, game three. As if those first two games didn't happen. And Kalaguchi's gonna bring the heat here. She's gonna Zena Fromm's gonna connect on it. Frazier running back into shallow right field center field. Scoops it up off the ground, and that's gonna be a single for Fromm. She's gonna take off for second though. I don't know why. Morgan whips it back to first. And Wheeler gets the tag for out number three and a very confusing continuation of this here in the first. I'm ready for you. Coach Dizzy Liz does sometimes employ some, I'd call them counteractive 
tactics. Uh, and they paid off for her a lot in the regular season. They went a, a healthy 10 and 4. Won the, the... They took the pennant in two games. And then they took the oh, super entire nation tournament in two games. We remember the Wombats dropped one game there. And that thriller in game two. So... We'll see what happens here. That one didn't pay off for Dizzy Liz, though. As Robinson will not make it on that grounder. Okay, I'm just gonna keep my eye on the ball and knock the cover off of it. Once again, I gotta extend my and the and the networks and the leagues. Great thanks to the folks here at the Super Colossal Dome and the Capital City Capitals finally bringing back a championship to Capital City for the first time in 20 years where it rightfully belongs. Sure you all know it out there, but for anyone who's new, the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe was founded here in Capital City back in 1949 as some um, post-war baseball aimed at the juniors. Dunkel throws three balls in a row there. Morgan connects on that one, so he foul left. It's nice to see it. Um, uh, this this season's been a homecoming with the Wombats. Uh, Coach Benny in her third season, finally winning the pennant in the Tri City Tournament. Played there for years, and now finally, after three years of trying, has been the top dog there. Took her team through the Ultra Grand uh, Super Entire Nation Tournament. And it's going to be out number two there for Morgan. And this is the first time a team from our division has made it to the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe since 1964. Name of that team? The Inscrutable Wombats. Get a load of that. Keisha Phillips. Basically a 1-0 count, two outs and nobody on, swing and a miss to even the count there. The Phillips, your regular season leader, tied with, Phillip, with uh, Jocinda Smith, her own teammate, for RBIs with 17, belts that one into deep center field. Is going to get past the center fielder, bounce off the Jumbotron, and she's going to stay at first. Didn't think she'd beat the tag there at second. And we've got our first hit of the day, ladies and gentlemen. And Smith comes out the bat, like I said. Uh, tied Phillips for the league record in ribbies this year. Brought in 17 of our own teammates. It's going to be ball one. A little high there for Julie Dunkel out on the mound. The hero of game one of this series. She, uh, through a comedy of errors, but also I have to commend the skills of Julie Dunkel. Hit it in the park home run in the top of the 10th inning. Uh, from which the Wombats were not able to recover, though it was very close, and that was definitely a game for the agents, the second longest in Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe history. Smith connects on a 1-2 count, pop fly infield, Dunkel gets out of the way of it for some reason, they can't collect the ball, so Smith will reach first, Phillips will reach second, and bringing up Ahmed Khan to bat. This one's out of here. Ahmed Khan will go down in BBFL baseball history as the man who hit a grand salami in the All City Tournament. Haven't seen that in over 50 years. As he now faces two balls. No strikes. Tremendous pitching thus far from Julie Dunkles. He connects on that one. Deep into right center field. Could it go? Yes, it does. Ahmed Khan belts it out of the park for the Wombat's first home run in this championship series at the beautiful Super Colossal Dome in downtown Capital City. And you'll see the Coors Light home run blimp inside the dome for some reason. Coors Light, Rocky Cold Mountain Beer, 
Rocky Cold Rocky Marriages. Duff Beer, or Coors Light, I'm sorry, the official drink of Life for Pusers. Cotton belted that for 442 yards. And put the Wombats on top, 3-0. And just as I was saying, Khan will be always remembered for that grand salami. I think he'll definitely be remembered for that. Three RBI homer. Game three of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. Rounding out the bottom of the order. Pitching legend Kenny Kawaguchi. While not known for his batting. He still goes out there and gives it his all every time. As he faces a 1-1 count here. Much less pressure on Kawaguchi now than it would have been 10 minutes ago if he'd had bases loaded or two people on. Evens the count there. Twos across the board for this pitching batter as Julie Dunkel crosses the quarter century mark if her pitch is thrown. No strikeouts, no walks yet. Still early in this one. Top of the second inning. Two outs. Kaguchi connects on that one. It's going to be foul. Keeps the count at two apiece. Fills the count there. 3-2. Two outs, nobody off. Connects on that one. Pops it up. That's going to get some distance. It's going to get past the shortstop. Going to get down. And after some discussion, they'll whip at the, the pitcher. Make sure Kaliguchi stays on first. Not known for his speed, so. He used to be known for his speed here. Uh, Pete Wheeler returns what am I the bat. supposed to do again? Wheeler in game three of the Super Entire Nation Tournament sustained a leg injury uh, legend to his ACL though his he nor his parents have officially come out for that but um, sources off the record have mentioned some sort of ACL sprain so he's still able to bat and still able to run and still able to field but his speed is now again which means he hasn't been able to steal a base here in the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe as the Easy 4-3 play is going to be there. Speaking of Cal or, uh, Wheeler's lack of speed. And back comes Sonia Hagen. And if you'll notice, looking at their batting order, Coach Dizzy Liz has changed up her batting order every single time and during this Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe, as she did through the Super Entire Nation Tournament and for the rest of the season. Coach Benny for the Wombats, however, finds what she likes and will decide to stick with it. She hasn't changed her batting order since midway through the regular season. As Kawaguchi throws two balls in a row there. Sonia Hagen connects on that one. Kawaguchi scoops it up for the 1-3 outs. Easy out number one. comes Leah Wayne, the ace pitcher from yesterday who was not able to pull off the win. Ended up giving up the 2-1 L. Morgan's throw to Wheeler will be successful for the 6-3 play. And out number two, and up comes Stan Olofsson. Olofsson brought someone home yesterday during garbage time to make sure the bananas didn't get blanked. It was not enough to rally, though, as he belts this one in the deep right center field. Robinson lets it get past him all the way to the warning track. All of a sudden, whips around. He's going to run for second. Can he get there in time? No, it doesn't look like it. Frazier with the tag for out number three. After two, it's Wombats by three. Top half of the order today, uncharacteristically cold. 
They usually register more hits than that, but Wheeler without a speed, and Pablo Sanchez sometimes hit or miss. Line drive at the left base line. This is going to get past him all the way out to the warning track. He's going to wheel around a second. Thinks better about that. He's going to come to first. So, uh, shut me up there with a single for Pablo Sanchez. Sanchez. Uh, one of the many highlights about the Wombats Game 3 win and the, all, the su Super Entire Nation Tournament. Hit a solo dinger in the fourth. It's Frazier facing a 1-0 count. Make that 2-0 count. Swing and a miss for Frazier there for strike one. Frazier had herself a game yesterday. She had a, she started off with a single and a double and then went 0 for 3 after that. As they, she now faces a 3-1 count. Julie Dunkel's superb pitching thus far today, despite giving up that home run last inning. <laughs> Her team has only allowed those four, maybe five hits now. I'd have to go check my stat sheet, but Andy Frazier makes sure she looks both wise before she crosses the street, because she got the walk single. And Dante Robinson up the bat with two on and nobody out. Let's see if Robinson will be able to put anything together. Here the Beautiful, super colossal dome. Climate controlled, reclining seats, cup holders for every man, woman, and child, and it does not get better than that. And I think that's half the reason anybody becomes a Capital City Capitals fan. That and the Capital City Goofball, of course. Voted the best mascot in National League Baseball. And that's going to be walk number two for Julie Dunkel. And Coach Dizzy Liz looks like she's starting to get a little upset up there. We now base is loaded with nobody out. And Stephanie Morgan coming up to bat. Okay, I'm just Again, Morgan on the ball and not quiet so far today. Here. Grounder up the left baseline. Olofsson will scoop it up, whip it to f out to home, and get Sanchez before he can score another run. <laughs> Nutty Banana is able to keep the score at three to none there. And here comes power hitter Keisha Phillips. <laughs> Julie Dunkel giving up two walks in a row. And a hit there, though. The great fielding by the Nutty Banana is able to keep Sanchez from coming home successfully. Dunkel starts off this at bat with two more balls straight to Keisha Phillips. Make that three as Dunkel hits the half century mark for pitches thrown. No strikeouts, two walks. Phillips connects on that one, live drive straight into the glove of the pitcher. Dunkel whips it the first, but he's not prepared to catch it. And Morgan will get Bex in time, but... Bananas will keep the bases loaded without giving up a run so far. And now we have Jocinda Smith, who's known for her RBIs and her power hitting, but not for her speed, so... If this doesn't get out of the infield, this is going to be out number three, folks. Evens the count there at one apiece. This little team that could. The Wild Wombats, hand-picked by Coach Benny, marches their way to a divisional title, losing only one game. Stomps their way into the Super Entire Nation Tournament, winning game one. Drops game two in only their second loss of the season. And then blows them out in game three. 
then loses game one of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe in stunning fashion. And their only third loss of the year. And they're going to get the throw at first for easy out three. So they'll strand three out there. Bananas keeping the score to three to zero as Xenon Estrada comes in. First baseman. Estrada, instrumental in game one of this series. He had a RBI double at the top of the fifth inning to tie the game after uh, Smith had an RBI double of her own bottom of the fourth to take the lead 1-0. Then, of course, Estrada evened it at one apiece next inning. And we were scoreless until the top of the tenth. Frazier will get that to Wheeler, and the 4-3 will be successful for out number one here, bottom of the third. We've got ourselves quite the game, ladies and gentlemen, and it could still go either way here, bottom of the third inning, as Davey Marion comes up the bat. Swing and a miss for Marion there for strike one. Ones across the board here. Davy Marion belts that one into shallow left center field. Morgan scrambling to get under it. Drops, bobbles the catch there, is able to pull it in at the last second for out number two. Interesting play there by Stephanie Morgan. Here comes Julie Dunkel, hero of game one. Foul ball there for strike one. Facing two outs and her nemesis of Kenny Kawaguchi swinging a miss for strike two. Let's see if Kawaguchi can pull off some of that junior Cy Young award winning magic. She connects on that one. It's going to be a foul ball tipped very, very foul and very, very left. Keep the count at 0 and 2. Kawaguchi, if you need more of an excuse for his batting prowess, as that one goes straight into the grounder. Grounder into the glove of Frazier, I should say. Sorry, I'm jarring my words. 4-3 successful, and that's going to be out number three. If you want more evidence of the pitching prowess of Kenny Kawaguchi, know that he has not thrown a walk, given up a walk, this entire season. Which, if he continues that streak through games three, four, and possible five of this series. That will be the first time we've seen that in league history. Going down to history books as one of the greatest of all time to play junior league baseball. Ahmed Khan off the bat. Off that three RBI dinger. Top of the second. Here we are, top of the fourth. A little doinker up the left base, the right base line. He's going to get beat to the bag for out number one. Khan <laughs> usually speedier than that, and it's time to pull the plug there on Julie Dunkel. Fifty-nine pitches thrown, no strikeouts, no walks. So Dean Estrada coming in to maybe start plugging holes in this dam that is the. Bananas pitching core. The coach Dizzy Liz and Coach Benny could almost not be more different in their coaching styles. Where Dizzy Liz likes to change up her batting order every game. Wheeler, er, Wheeler I'm sorry. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Benny again? finds what she likes and she keeps it there. Dizzy Liz likes to. Uh, have a heavy rotation to pitchers and make sure everybody on her team can is capable of filling that space. Benny really banks on her one true pitcher and then has a backup just in case she needs it. And we can see where that succeeds for both teams and we can see where that fails for both teams. Evidence to game one and two of this series. So Wheeler connects on a 1-1 hit. 
Uh, it gets past the second baseman to see if he's able to make it in time, but he's just not going to... He just doesn't have the speed there anymore. Out number three. This fourth inning stretch is brought to you by Duff Beer. Can't get enough of that. Oh, wonderful Duff. Bottom of the fourth inning here for the Bananas. Trying to get something going in the bottom half of this game. Down three after a three RBI homer from Ahmed Khan. Jay Green's going to pop this one up. Kawaguchi getting under it. Wheeler getting back behind for whatever reason. He's Kawaguchi, easy basket catch for out number one. Back up the bat for Francis Bluer. Swing and a miss there for strike one. Let's see what Kalguchi's got in store. Brings the heat. She sends it back. Deep pop fly into left into center field. Gets past Phillips. And she's gonna collect it, whip it to second. And she's gonna reach on a double there. And the no-hitter ends after one and one-third inning. Unfortunate there for Kalaguchi, who is yet to hit, the, bring in the elusive no-hitter. This would be the biggest stage they have it, of course, but still a lot of pressure on them. But as your faithful commentator, I must point out that this time it wasn't my fault. I did not bring it up. There's no commentator's curse. Fromm will connect on that. Uh, Frazier decides to throw it to third. She's going to try and steal home. Whips it back to third. Not in time. Speed. On Dunkel there. It's going to be a threat as the Wombats only have one out. Runners at the bases. Sonia Hagen representing tie and run. Early swing there for strike one. Hagen could not have a more quiet playoff run, has yet to record a hit throughout the entire playoffs. 0-2 oh, count, connects, grounder, Smith gobbles it up, whips at the wheeler for out, Dunkel's coming home, Smith tags her out at home for out number three, and that's going to keep, that's going to keep the bananas scoreless through four. Wombats on top by three. <laughs> Kawaguchi, folks, has just gotten so close to these. Taking a look back through some of my notes. Met me. Sanchez connects on a grounder there. It's going to be scooped up for the 1-3 out. Come on, get your Kawaguchi had a no-hitter going through 4 in one third inning in Game 3 of the Super Entire Nation Tournament. And then through 5 full innings yesterday in Game 2 of the Ultra Grand Championship Universe. And then through 3 and a third today, so... Still... Best pitcher you got out there in the league as Estrada will bumble that for a second and end up pulling it in. Robinson now facing two out with nobody on. Here, top of the fifth. <laughs> and the bananas really starting to bring it here when the pressure's on. They're down three in the top of the fifth inning, and they're finally getting their fielding together and preventing the Wombats from scoring. As Robinson fouls that one. It's still a long road to dig yourself out of this 3-0 hole, though. Strada's been great pitching in relief, giving up a couple hits, but no runs. One, two count. Off the tip of the barrel there, keeping the count, one and two. Tips that one back. Free souvenir. Pitch 
match number six of this at bat incoming. And they're going to call that one a strike. That was a little on the line for me up here in the booth, but I'm going to have to agree with the umpire. Strikeout for Dante Robinson. Here we are. Bottom of the fifth inning. Bananas. With six outs to their name. Have to get something going here. So far, in every game of this series, it's only been... Only three runs have been scored in either game. In both first game, both, in both of the first two games, I'm sorry, it's been a 2-1 game. Wombat's up 3-0. Here is the outlier. Wayne connects on that curveball. Grounder to Morgan, over to Wheeler for the 6-3. Easy out, number one. Great fielding out there by the Wombats to keep their hopes of taking the lead in this series alive. In a three run in a three run lead. We'll go a long way to assure that. Oh one count. Off the tip of the barrel there for Stan Olofsson for a straight two. And a swing and a see ya for Stan Olofsson. And strikeout number two on the day for Kitty Galaguchi. If you need evidence to see how good this Nutty Bananas team is, coached by Skipper Dizzy Liz, just look at the number of strikeouts Galaguchi has registered across these series. Nominally lower than his regular season pitching. And that's going to be out number three on the 2-3. And bring us to the top of the sixth inning with Wombats on top by three. As you can tell, my mom and into the, the great big final fruit. frame. Will the Wombats be able to add to their lead? Will the Wombats keep their hold to a three-run deficit? Will they be able to rally? And even the score as Morgan connects on a grounder. Strada's going to whip at the first for the easy one-three. Out number one. Doesn't fall for the screwball, belts that one, and then some, but unfortunately a little early, gonna be foul. That one was going over the fence, folks. Connects on that one, high pop fly in the shallow left field. Shortstop. Let's get by him, and she's not good. She's gonna hit back to first. Wise decision there. So Wombats with a man on first, and only one out. Yeah, we might be on dome, but my allergies are bad today. Let's see what Smith comes up with here. Connects on a screaming line drive, but it's going to be a grounder. Gets to second, over to first for the double play, but she ends up dropping the pass. Interesting move there. Looks like she went to swipe and try to take the bag. Fell out of her glove. So well, Phillips wasn't able to make it to second. Smith will reach first, miraculously. As Ahmed Khan comes out the bag. Hitting that dinger in the fourth. Second, I'm sorry. Smith will not be the tag at second for out number three. Head into the final three outs. Bananas down three. Wombats just need to hold on here. <laughs> and who better to lead that charge than Junior Cy Young Award winner Kenny Kawaguchi, your league leader in strikeouts in the regular season, throwing 86 of them, more than 30 than his next closest competitor. Second best ERA with 1.42 over the entire season. Davy Marriott now facing 0 2 count. And swing connects grounder. Kalguchi collects it, whips it the first. The 1 3 gets you out number one. And the Wombats move one step closer to winning game three of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. Julie Dunker up to that. The hero.
of game one with her in the park home run in the top of the 10th inning. A feat we haven't seen since the in the park home run massacre of 95. Julie Dunkel connects. Line drive straight into the glove of Kenny Kawaguchi. Snags it out of the air for out number two. Wombat fans, get on your feet. We could be seeing the end of this game right here. Jay Green swing and a miss on that curveball for strike one. Jay Green, Jay Green constitutes 50% of the strikeouts thrown today by Kenny Kawaguchi. Connects on that one. Deep fly. That's. I'm just calling it. That one's gone. Jay Green with some revenge for that strikeout earlier today. And, ladies and gentlemen, the Nutty Bananas aren't out of this one. You'll see Jay Green belting that one. The hero of game one, with his clutch pitching at the end, belts that for 713 freaking yards as he passes under the shadow of the Coors Light blimp. Coors Light, the official drink of the Nutty Bananas. Yeah, I just went there. Banana. Desi Liz and her Nutty Bananas make it a 3-1 game. As Francis Bluer comes off the bat. Kalguchi now giving up another one. Bluer pops that one up. Deep left center field. Can Phillips get under it? No, she can't. Dunkel's going to come around a second, though. Slide in the second is safe. So now, we got ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. Wom uh, Bananas have a runner on second. Xena Fromm up to bat, representing the tying run. With two outs. Connects on that one. High pop fly in the left field. Ahmed Khan trying to get under it. Loses it's in the lights. Gets past him. It's a grounder. It's going to go out to the running track. And there goes Dunkel all the way home. to, And it's now a 3-2 game with a runner on second. Zena Fromm reaches on a double. She's going to take off her third. What is she doing? They're going to throw it back to second. And they're going to get the tag there. Dizzy Liz, I'm not sure what she was doing, but she just gave up the tying run. And now, Wombats win game three of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe in odd fashion. Three runs to two. Cannot believe that's how it ended, but what are you going to do? Bananas, make it a thriller there at the end. After a three RBI dinger in the second. Take a, take a peek at our progressive end of game stats. Uh, great batting by the Wombats, but they just weren't able to get much going. They just squeak out of game three, winning that one. Uh, Kitty Kawaguchi just misses the half, the half century mark on pitches thrown. <laughs> So join us tomorrow for Game 4 of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe, the potential final game of this series. Coach Benny and her Wild Wombats on top, two games to one. But Skipper Dizzy Liz and her Nutty Bananas are not going to go down without a fight. So, for all of us here at BBSN, I'm Ethan Leach. Thank you, and good night.